I first came into contact with origami when I was five years old. My sister came home from school and she knew how to make paper planes. And the rules of sibling rival rivalry prevented her from telling me immediately how to do it, but eventually she taught me. And I was pretty thrilled. From the get-go, I could make a toy from any piece of paper I wanted. It's a pretty good power to give a kid. Um, and I made a lot of them. My mother saw my enthusiasm for making them, and she intervened a little bit further. What I really wanted was a book on making paper planes, but instead, I got a book on origami. And the most complex thing in this book was this, uh, this rhinoceros. And I was disappointed, no planes. Everything was made from squares. But still, this gave me something to work towards. It took five years, but I learned how to make this thing. So what is origami? It's not paper planes. The best definition that you probably all accept is the Japanese art of paper folding. And this definition rings true. It is that. However, it's a bit more than that. It's a tool and an idea. It's a way of manipulating form that you can apply to different structures if you choose to do so. This chair is an excellent example, but a little bit ugly. I'll admit that. <laughs> the language of origami is trans uh, is transported and explained through simple diagrams, little line drawings, annotations, arrows, and using these simple line drawings, you can make things as simple as aeroplanes, or you can make rhinoceroses. As you can see, there's a very strong relationship between origami and simple geometry. Using simple geometry, you can make a square from any piece of paper, this enables you to make origami wherever you like. But origami need not only be limited to pieces of paper. Uh, there are a few champions of origami. One of them is Robert Lang. He has focused on the mathematical side of origami patterns and using stick drawings has been able to generate a computer program which will make you the base pattern for anything you'd like. Another gentleman, John Montroll, uses an empirical system. His patterns are all built on previous experience and adding to previously existing designs, increasing complexity. So you can make things like this. Uh, I did a lot of origami as a child, but I think I did a little bit more through my teenage years. And I did a lot when I was traveling. I did a lot in class when I was bored. Looking out windows wasn't always satisfying, but your workbooks are an excellent resource if you choose to use them that way. And there's paper everywhere. There's posters. You've been given a few sheets of paper today. There's paper towel in the bathroom if you'd like to use that. It's all possible to be molded and transformed into different designs whether for play or to execute a pattern. Once upon a time, I was waiting in line for the British Museum of Natural History, and a child in front of me was very vocally impatient. Um, don't go there on a school holiday. Um, and so I was waiting in line. This little boy standing in front of me, very, very irritated at the fact that the line was long and helping me to be irritated as well. I searched through my pockets and I found a receipt. I started folding that piece of paper and the kid started watching. He was taken in by what I was doing. I was transported temporarily. The line was forgotten. I was in my little zone doing the thing that I loved. And at the end of making this dinosaur, this was a piece of paper, I gave it to the kid. This kid was very happy. And I knew when we got into the museum he was going to look at the dinosaurs. And so I didn't have to look at that kid again. I went and looked at the rocks. <laughs> this is an example of empirical building. These patterns, as you can see, is an evolution. The paper opens up. The, step, the finished product is a flower, but in the start, it looks a little bit more like a bud of a flower. Um, 
this is just the insertion of simple creative juices to an originally existing form. But origami, as I said, can be made from other things other than just paper. It's a, it's a tool and a concept. It's the idea of manipulating form by folding. And when you do that, you can create all manner of things. This is made from an aluminium composite material. By scoring on one side, you can create a fold that goes one way. You make a score on the other side, it will fold the other way. Find out where you want to put your folds, and then you construct your form using the lines that have already been put in, form, uh, in place into the structure. This is another example of using origami as a process. This is a ceramic lampshade. Now, the origami isn't the finished product at all. It's only a means to an end. For this, the idea was to get the aesthetic qualities of the paper, the crease folds, the slight warping, the softness that you get when a piece of paper has been handled so much that it softens, yet still has planes where you can see that it was once st stiff. Now, if you take these concepts and work on them a little bit further, you can use them where they might actually really be needed. One of the great facets of origami is the fact that you can make really complex things compacted down into little tiny spaces. In space, this becomes a really, really relevant thing. To launch things into space, they're worth their weight in gold, quite literally. And the space that they take up is also worth that much money. This device, dubbed a variable transmission vehicle, has wheels which are based on a basic tessellation, allowing it to expand or contract, depending on the terrain it's on, making it an all-terrain vehicle, or to have very large wheels to increase its speed when it reaches flat terrain. And to get into space, and aiding our conquest of space, origami satellites devices that are able to be compacted down again into small spaces, and then when they reach their destination, unfurl to maximize their potential. The fact that this is all one unified unit means that it only requires one engine to open it up at a time. It's not relying on multiple systems which could all simultaneously bugger up. It's depending on the structural integrity of the form, which is already there. Now, it doesn't matter if the idea of making satellites doesn't appeal to you, or if you don't want to make tacky furniture. Origami is a, school and a skill and a process which you can very passively develop. You can do it for fun. You can do it to pass time. You can do it to entertain. You can do it to make gifts. And there's paper everywhere. It's really quite a, one of the most accessible art forms I can think of. It's not like drawing where you need the piece of paper and the pencil. It's, it's whatever you want to manipulate. I by no means consider myself a master of origami. I just think that I understand the basic principles enough to be able to apply them in different areas. And that's all I'd really like to share with you today. The man who made this, he's a master. He's made from one square of paper, something which I couldn't even be begin to understand how to achieve. But I can kind of get how he got there. Too much time. <laughs> uh, origami can be anything you want. You do it wherever you want. It's a box of tricks. You can think about it when you're packing your pile of clothes that are on the floor into your chest of drawers and think about the space efficiency and the efficiency of getting things into space. You can get your presents that have been wrapped and use that wrapping paper to make the decorations for the next year. There are all many, so many different ways you can consider it, so many different ways you could apply it. And if origami is a tool and design is presenting the idea, the potential of an idea, then I'd like to see what other people like you could achieve. Thank you very much. Happy holidays.